Right, sir. So we'll start the today's session. So before going to start the today's session, and uh, I'll ask three questions. Just type your answers in the chat box. Right, we'll quickly ask these questions. So what are the what are the sync jobs we have? What are what are all the sync jobs we have? Can you type your answers in chat? It's not how many sync jobs we have. What are all the sync jobs we have? I mean, whatever you type are not uh, synchronization jobs, and those are the integration scenarios. So there is a difference between synchronization jobs as well as integration scenarios, right? So what is a if, if I run a repository object sync? What will happen? What is the purpose of repository object sync? Profiles, roles, and user data will be pulled to GRC from your target backend system. Okay, All right. So, what is the purpose of authorization sync? What is the purpose of authorization sync? So your SC24 data will be pulled to GRC. Right. Action is this. It's not, it's not all T codes. The T codes which are executed by user. It collects the T codes which are executed by users to GRC for a report. What is which is what is a role issues job will do? The roles which are used by users will be pulled to GRC. Okay. So, what are the ICF services that we need to activate for our access control com configuration? What are all the ICF services we need to activate? This is GRC public. What is business configuration set? What is business configuration set? Right. So business configuration state contains standard configuration data 
and when you activate the VCZ, that will copy to your customer tables so that your implementation will become easy as we don't need to build anything from scratch. Right? So, what are the modes we have activating of VCZ? Default and expert. Right. What type of transport request gets created when you create when you activate BCZ? It's a customizing request. Right. So what is connector? What is connector? So connector connects two different systems and exchange information between them. So it's not only the connection and also it can exchange information between them. That is very important. Okay. So connector is to connect two different systems and exchange information between them. Right. What are the steps we follow to create a connector? So what are all the steps? I'm not asking the path SPROMG. So I'm not asking about the steps. Create connector, define connector, and define connector group, and assign connector groups to groups type, and assign connectors to connector group. So these are the steps we need to do when you have to, when you want to create a connector. Or when you want to add any system connector to a GRC. Right. After this, what we need to do? After these five steps, what we need to do? We need to do integration scenarios. Right. What are the integration scenarios we have to do for your access control component? AUTH. PROV. ROLMG and SU PMG. These are the integration scenarios we need to perform. After this, for the integration scenarios done, the next step is sync. So remember, so again, uh, after performing these uh, integration scenarios, before you do your sync jobs, you need to maintain your connector in the access control, maintain connector settings. Did you forget that? So first what you need to do, you need to maintain your connector in the access control, maintain connector settings. And after that only you need to run your synchronization jobs. So don't run your synchronization job without maintaining your connector in the maintain connector settings in access control. Clear? Yes, no, sir. Is there any doubt till now in post integration steps? No. Okay. So we'll start with the emergency access management. We we'll start with the emergency access management. So, so that we simply calling as EA. Right, sir. So, what do you understand by the emergency access management? 
So what is the purpose of this component in GRC and how it benefit for the organization? How it's benefit for the organization, right? That you need to understand. First. So what is the purpose of having this emergency access management and what is the benefit that it gives to the organization? Then how we need to configure it that you need to understand one by one, right? So let me tell you one scenario. So let's for example, let's forget about GRC. There is no GRC in olden days. So we have a ECC system where our business happens regularly. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes. So ECC system is one where your business transactions or business happens regularly. Now what happens is, so there is a, so as I said, discussed in first class. Okay. There, so there is a purchase order created and purchase order approval should be done by the plant manager or production manager. So creation will be done with the employee of who works in production, but purchase order approval should be approved by the production manager. Now what happens is if the purchase order, purchase order ever send yourself, for whom we need to send the purchase order? Manager. No, purchase order will be sent to vendor, right? For goods, for raw material or goods for your business. So sales order will be sent to customer to sell your goods, but purchase order sent to NT, which will send to your vendor to purchase the raw material. Sir, purchase order sent to NT, money is going out of the organization and buying the raw materials. That is your purchase orders. Sales order sent to NT, money is coming to your company and you are selling the goods after it's ready. That is sales order. So is it clear, right? You're all well known about this. What is purchase orders and what is sales order? Yes, sir. Now, uh, there is a, a customer, okay, there are a customer orders to be delivered within the timeline, but what happens is the raw material is, is not available in the plant and that needs to be purchased to complete the goods. Now, what happened? The, the person is, has raised the PO because they need to have the raw materials ready to finish the goods, whatever they're working. Now, what happens is they created a PO, but manager is not available to approve it. Manager is not available to approve it. Then what will happen? So until the PO approves, will it go to the vendor? No, sir. No. If the if we wait for the the manage, uh, managers to come, the production managers to come, and after approval only we need to send to them. So will the customer wait for uh, goods? So once they order the goods or anything, will they wait for more days? If you say that my manager is not available. No, no, sir. They will choose for another option. Right? There are multiple options. There are multiple competitional companies. There are multiple options. They can choose other options. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is it last for business or not? Yes. Last one. So I'm just explaining the emergency. What what is emergency situation? So emergency situation means it's not like firing in the room or uh, something. Uh, what we can say, earthquake. So that that is not emergency situation. It's, in access wise what kind of emergency situations we can arise now in this situation what will happen is so this person who has access to PO creation they will submit a request to have access to PO approval to approve on behalf of the manager yes or no yes sir now what will happen so that ticket will come to the security team we'll open SOIM we'll find the rule we'll find the rule and we'll send out to role owner approval yes or no Yes, sir. Okay. So without a roll on approval, will you give access to users? No. no. We'll follow the ECC mechanism. So we'll find out the role and then we'll send it for the roll on approval. So once the roll on is approved, he will approve definitely. Why he will approve? Because there is a emergency. justification. There is an emergency situation happens in the business. So he, that by one needs to be approved. Then once the roll on is approved, what will happen? We will assign the role to user. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes, yes. Now, this user, the particular user will have access to PO creation and PO approval. Now, so now, what is the guarantee that this particular user only approve the PO which is required for business now? So, do you guarantee that he won't create any other POs and he, he, he himself can approve those POs? Do you guarantee that? Do you believe? We cannot. We cannot. 
we cannot guarantee that they, they may sometimes they may commit a fraud okay these people will create a some uh, pivots which are unnecessary and they will they will have uh, deals with the vendor so that i'll create one pivot just approve and don't need to send the raw material so i myself can approve the pivot itself because i have access so we can have a share between that so will i will he be able to talk with that vendor sometimes yes or no will it be happens yes happens so who will loss at the end in this situation yes, business now after you providing some uh, the risky access because already there is a creation access and you are providing like appro approval access if they were providing some ris risky access in the uh, area so who is going to be monitor who is going to be monitor whether what actions he is performing with this access security team no 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 security team is not responsible to monitor what what is the what logs he is doing what pivots are approval security team is not responsible because in ecc there is no one to monitor when you assign the critical access to user there is no one to monitor the logs sometimes the logs may not be available if you do not enable the audit logs sometimes even the logs enable so no one will monitor regularly so, so audit will come audit will come every question, no? yes sir we can give only the modify operation no for him and instead of giving a permission for the creation we can give only for the changes that that creation is required for his day to day activities sir It's okay his, okay it is day to day regular activities is required creation but approval has to be done by the manager but manager is not available in this situation he need access as well okay getting it or not yeah 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 so if you create only modify po then what he how he works on his day to day activities got it no now so these kind of emergency situations so will be handled through emergency access management in a proper controlled manner got it now so these kind of emergency access will be handled through emergency access management component in the access control in proper manner so we'll see how it works in a proper manner so remember what is what is em is c when a user when a user wants to work beyond is beyond is day to day activities role so and those extra access and i said no extra access those extra access will be provided through eam in controlled manner in control manner got it now so whenever any user wants to work beyond his boundaries that means beyond his day to day activities limit see if any role required for any user which he requires for his day to day activities we can assign to them directly that's okay but if any critical access which is not required for his day to day activities but it's only requires for some emergency situation then those kind of access those kind of extra access will be provided through eam in control manner so how it's in a control manner So remember, sir. In EAM, we have a concept called firefighter ID. What a concept called? We have a firefighter ID. So remember, this firefighter ID will have an extra access. Will have a extra access or wide access. Will have a wide access. Now, so if any if any user require an extra access, we don't assign roles to user directly. Instead of that, we'll assign that critical access to firefighter ID. and will assign the firefighter id to user so that user can use the firefighter id to perform this task is it clear now how it works can you repeat once please right sir so when a user wants to work on the critical emergency situation and he requires some critical access you don't assign that critical roles directly to user account getting my point you don't assign that access directly to user account instead will assign the ffid to user which is having that extra access already got it now even even if you give an permission with through the ffid also we can you cannot uh, create separate uh, p bundle so that's what let me let me finish fully okay so we'll provide that ffid to user and remember this ffid has the concept called owner and controller owner and controller for every ffid we have a owner and controller what will happen is so once the FF, once any user uses the ffid and do any task 
immediately logs will be created and logs will be sent to controller immediately whatever the whatever he performs using ffid everything will be recorded and the logs will be sent to controller immediately so that controller can monitor immediately what activities this user has been performed using ffid is it clear now that means there is someone who is going to be monitor the logs which are executed by the firefighter id so that we can get to know immediately so okay what activities he has done he has done only the required ones or he has done any extra so if he has done any extra things then controller will see the logs and he can question the firefighter immediately so this user immediately why you have done this is there any justification to do this if there is no proper justification then sometimes it leads to fire the employee as well in the company is it clear so whether it will come to know to the security team or what the security team is nothing to do here we are just no, no, because no, because i said uh, it will let's say alert come to the due to the ffid so it will go to the us user itself at least for some other management or any security team department for them it is come to know so it will be monitoring this be easy that's all Sir, as a security consultant, how would you know about process adder? How would you know about if FICO user uses? How would you know about if FICO adder? Can we configure a particular role manager or sorry, department manager, someone alert that something? That controllers are related to their particular department. Okay, so okay, yeah, fine. Is, that what, here the security consultant nothing to do because we don't understand the functionality of functionals. So we don't understand the FICO process, we don't understand the MM process, we don't understand the HR process because their module owners has to be understand that. So their module business owners only has to be updated as a controller so that they get to know what activities they perform whether those activities are proper or not and they can monitor that so got it now yes sir yes sir no sir yes sir clear okay now so what is emergency access management when a user wants to work beyond his day to day activities rules and those extra access will be provided through your em in control manner so how how is this control manner because you will provide access to ffid your ffid has a controller if any user uses ffid what will happen logs will be created and logs will be sent to controller immediately and they can monitor what activities has been performed using this ffid so is it logs monitoring is is there logs generation logs creation is there in ecc if you assign direct role to user no sir no sir so there is no one to monitor even the audit will happens on every yearly once if auditors uh, may not may be fine that and may not be fine that in one year anything will happen the employee may be left the organization so what might be happen anything so it's not, it's not good to have a logs for critical activities we should have a log so that's why this emergency access management provides this type of benefits to organization now got it how how it's benefit for organization Emergency access management. Yes sir, no sir. Yes sir, yes sir. Right sir. So what we do is, so we will have basically five types of users. How many types of users in uh, EAM? Five types of users. Let me tell you what are the five types of user we have, and what are the responsibilities of each user. So we have a admin. We have a so I'll come admin and tell you last. We have a owner and we have a controller and we have a firefighter ID. We have a firefighter and we have a admin. So these are the five. Type five characters we have in EAM. The five types of users we have in EAM. So what are the types of users we have in EAM? One is owner. Other one is controller. Other one is firefighter ID and firefighter as well as admin. Now we need to understand what is the responsibilities of each user in the EAM. Now what is the owner do? What the owner do? Remember, for every firefighter ID, we have a owner and Control. So, following. Sir, am I audible? Yes or no? 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So remember, the owner, so what owner do is, owner approves, owner approves firefighter ID assignments to users. And he can also extend the extend the validity period of his own firefighter idea. So what owner will do? So it's like owner like nothing but your role owner. So role key role owner allow unta do. FFID could have FFID owner unta do. So what FFID owner will do? So whenever any user require an FFID access, who has to approve that FFID access assignment? Owner. Owner. So without owner approval, we should not assign FFID to users. Got it now? Yes, and some and remember owner can also can also extend the validity of firefighter id validity period let's say example when user is there you assign the firefighter id for three days because he requires some emergency activity has to perform for three days let's say example from 8th march to 11th march these three days now the emergency task is not completed and is still required for a, one more day or two more days extension that means they require for 13th till 13th so owner have access and uh, response owner have access to extend the even the validity period of FFID as well for a user. Got it now? Both? Yes or no, sir? Okay. Yes, sir. So remember the firefighter IDs to users will not provide it in any project more than three days. So they can be pro it's based on the project requirements, but good practices is to so make it less days as many as you can if, if it is required only one one only for one day give it only for one day if it is required for only two days give it for two days or three days or three days so more than five days it's not recommendable to assign the firefighter id access to any user because it's having a critical access yes or no yes sir got it sir so because emergency situation is if it's there if you want to perform any activities how many how many days you do that so based on the business requirement only you need to do that so you can't use the FFID for longer days. Got it now? Yes, sir. Now, what is the owner responsibility? What is the what owner do in a EAM functionality? Sir, what is owner do? Owner approves FFID assignments to the user and he can extend the validity period. Right. So let me come back to controller. So controller is one who reviews. So is the one who reviews the logs. Who reviews the logs which are executed during the firefighter ID session. So what is the responsibilities of controller? What he will do? So what controller do? Reviews the logs which are executed in the FFID session. So let's say example, a user requested firefighter ID, owner has been approved. So after owner approval, the firefighter ID is assigned to the user. Now he is logged into the firefighter ID, he has done some activities. Now what will happen? All the activities is recorded and that will send to whom? Controller. Now what oh. controller will do? Controller reviews the logs which are executed during the firefighter ID session. That means what T code has been used using that particular T code, what activities he has been performed. Everything is recorded in the log so that controller will monitor the logs and he will review. If the logs are proper, he has done only the required ones which are required for business, then he will approve the logs. If he has done any extra which are not required and if that if that's suspicious, then he'll definitely question the firefighter user immediately why you did this what is the business justification then the firefighter user has to say the justification to controller if justification is okay he will agree if not okay sometimes these owners can fire the employee as well in the organization is it clear yes, sir. so different so got the difference between owner and controller here yes sir so owner, sir, owner will do approvals of approvals of assignment to F approvals of FFID assignments to users, and he can also extend the validity period. But he won't review the logs. Owner won't review the logs. 
you just decide who can have ffid in the organization let's say example i have a fico module in fico i have a 20 users but is it ffid assigned to 20 users no only the only the persons who decided by the owner so owner will decide who can have ffid in the fico let's say example these three people can do the firefighting in emergency situation only those three people only can have the ffid access because he is the one who is going to be approved who can have the ffid in the organization yes or no yes, sir. right and also controller controller what he will do after the any use any firefighter user executed the firefighter id transaction all the logs will be reviewed by this is the controller act responsible now ffid what is ffid sir which will provide an extra access to owner and controller no owner and control why why owner and controller require uh, access only the firefighter user that normal user so which will provide an extra access to users in emergency situation yes or no Yes, sir. sir, remember, owner and controller is not going to perform the activities using FFID. They will, they are the owners who monitors and approves assignments to user. Now, who will use the FFID? The user who require. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Now, so FFID. What is FFID? Basically, which will provide an extra access to users in emergency situation. And remember, FFID always the type of service. FFID is always a type of service user so when you are creating ffid what type of uh, user type you need to create service user so remaining okay. all firefighter user admin controller owner all those are the dialog users but except firefighter ID. now this is the service users and what ffid consists of the critical access of a module critical access of module or sometimes you may have SAP underscore all as well to the FFID. Is it clear? What is FFID here? Yes, sir. So what is FFID? Which will approve an extra access to users in an emergency situation. So it's, it's not approved, which will provide, okay. Which will provide an extra access to users in emergency situation. So what is the type of FFID user? Service, service user. Service. And what access it consists? Like critical access yeah. module, module or, or SFP underscore. All. Now, who is the firefighter? User. User. That is the user only. So who uses who uses the firefighter ID in emergency situation? In emergency situations are firefighters. Got it, no? The firefighter is a normal user, sir. Firefighter is a normal user who require an FFID access in the emergency situation. Now, when you assign firefighter ID to a normal user, he will become a firefighter. Got it, no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, firefighter is, firefighter is a normal user in the business, but he's having his own day-to-day -day access. But when he wants to work on beyond his day-to-day -day access, if the owner approves, the firefighter ID will be assigned to normal user. Yes or no? Then you will become a firefighter. firefighter. Clear that? Yes, sir. So who, who uses the firefighter ID in emergency situations are firefighters. Got it now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What admin, who are the admins? Who are the admins? Security. Yes, yeah, right. yeah. so, so forget about the security, sir. Now you are in GRC, you, you become a GRC admin or GRC consultant. Okay. GRC admin is admin team. Now, what GRC admins will do? So what admin responsibility? We'll take a approach from the yeah. role owner and we'll assign the role to a particular user. Okay. Remember, the first no admin is the one who configure EAM for a client, right? We have to configure right EAM component, yes or no? 
Yes, sir. Go configure EAM. And if I software configuration of EAM and who admin is the one who will create will create owner controllers firefighters firefighter IDs and firefighters yes or no who has to create sir admin only has to create if I want to create a owner setup owner ID we need to we need to create so we need to do this all this thing and also we only map we only map FFIDs to owner controller controllers firefighters got it sir so what admin do admin will build the reason codes as well i'll tell you what is the reason codes so admin activities now got it now what admins do yes sir so admin is the one who configure entire eam and will create controllers. owners and controllers and ffid create owners controllers ffid and firefighters and also he only map the firefighter id to owners controllers and firefighter so and also he will build the reason codes that is a responsibility of admin so you mentioned two own. times you mentioned ffid two times Wait, sir. is it uh, firefighter okay okay ffid and firefighters okay you mentioned two times for the same. Okay, map FFID to owners, controllers, and firefighters. Right? We'll create owners, controllers, firefighter, and firefighter users here. Okay? Yeah. So creation as well as mapping, as well as troubleshooting, everything will be taken care by admin. Is that clear? Yes, sir. So what is the reason for? It's a, is it a description about the reason. Sir, I'll tell you, sir, the reason code that's what I'll tell you because uh, there is a separate uh, session for that reason code. Okay, when you are configuring EAM, what is the purpose of reason code? Where we use the reason code, I'll tell you. Okay, because I wanted to show you some configuration after that only I need to make you understand the reason codes. If I tell you now, it will be still confusing to you. Okay, we'll cover it. Okay, in a proper way. So, clear on this, sir. Yes, sir. Right. So remember, so how how it will be? How how many firefighter IDs will be having in a, a regular business? So many firefighter IDs will be created. So just remember, let's say I have a six modules. I have a seven modules in my organization. So one is you can say seven more. What are the modules? So number three is them. So let's say example. I have a FICO. I have a MM. I have a ST. I have a HR. And I have a warehouse. I have a production planning and these are the functional modules I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Along with that, I have a security, I have a, a BAP and I have a basis. basis. These are the functional modules I have. Now, how you need to create the firefighter IDs? How a firefighter IDs will be created in GRC for each module? So let's say example, for each module, I may have required two. So there may be a three firefighter IDs also available, but remember, sometimes it's, you go with the two. Let's say example. So firefighter ID is like this FFID underscore FFID underscore FICO one and FFID underscore FICO two and then MM FFID underscore MM01 FFID underscore MM02. If any module require more than two, we can we can we can create more firefighter IDs like FFID underscore MM03 like that. For SD it will be like that. So average if I take two for each module. How many modules we have here? Six and three. How many modules you have here? Total how many modules, sir? Nine. Nine. Then how many FFIDs will be available? Eighteen. 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 So remember, if anybody asks how many FFIDs are available in your project or in your uh, uh, client, so you can say that 18 to 20 FFIDs will be available. 18 to 20 FFIDs okay. will be available. Based on your modules, sir. If you have an n number of modules, and if you require any more, more uh, FFIDs for each module, also you can create. So and remember, and owner for each FFID. Uh, yes, tell me, sir. Is there any limitation for FFID creation? So no limitation, sir. Just a service user. How many number of you want, you can create. Depends on EAM. It's not depends on EAM. It depends on the uh, your client. Emergency. Yeah, yeah, emergency. Yeah. 
it's client requirement sir it's not an emergency as well it's a client requirement but remember what is the uh, how the firefighter id will work is one firefighter id can be assigned to multiple users one firefighter id can be assigned to multiple user let's say example i assign this pico firefighter id to user 1 and user 2 as well now when user 1 using the ffid of pico 1 user 2 will not able to use it only one user can log into ffid at a time even though you assign to multiple user getting it so for yes, only one user can access the firefighter id at a time even when you assign the same firefighter id to multiple user if one user log in at first until unless this user is log out another user cannot access to the same firefighter id is it clear Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That, that's how it is. Sir, that's why so emergency situations, okay, sir, render chain code. Then what is a what do you do? Because there is two emergency situations at once. Then one user is using the firefighter ID to resolve one of the emergency situations. Then until he log out, until he log out, another cannot be used. So in that that's why we create a user. firefighter ID study so that another user can use the other firefighter ID. Is it clear now? Yes, it's based on the business requirement. How many firefighter IDs they require for each module will do that. And remember, this firefighter ID will have all access of FICO, and this firefighter ID is having all access of MM, and SD firefighter IDs will have access to all access of SD. It will be like that. And we have a two more FFIDs extra, or one at least one FFID extra, which is consisting of SAP underscore all. Why SAP underscore all FFIDs require is sometimes there may be a situation which require having access to cross function modules. Getting my point? Sometimes some situations require access to cross functional modules. Like I need to have access to MM and SD. I may need to have access to MM and PICO and SD. So it, it, in that kind of situations, users will go with the FFID, which is having SAP underscore all. Getting my point? Yes, sir. No, sir. So the design will be like this. The FFID's design will be like this in most of the projects. So for each module, we have a 2, 2, 2, and extra we have a 2, which is having SAP underscore all. So SAP underscore all will not be given to uh, that much easily, this FFID is to users, but in case there is any situation which require cross functional module access, cross module access, then only we'll provide this firefighter ID based on the owner approval. Again, for every FFID, we have a owner, we have a controller. So for FICO FFID, the person who knows the FICO well, that, that means FICO department managers and those will be the owners and controllers. For MM IDs, the MM related uh, managers will be the owner and controller. Got getting it now? The SD owner, SD FFID's owner will be SD functional owners. Is it clear now for you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. So this is about your the user types, what we have in FFID and what is their purposes and how the FFID, how many FFIDs will be created, how many owners we have, how many controllers we have. So that you need to understand properly. It's not like, uh, so you can say that the base that we, for each module, we have a two FFIDs and averagely we have a 20 FFIDs in my project kind of thing. Okay. Got it that? Yes, Remember, sir, the first one is so before I go to create these users and set up these users, uh, map the FFIDs, the creation of FFIDs, this has to do before I need to configure EAM. Sir. Before I need to configure EAM. So let me log into system. I'll, I'll show you what is the first step when you want to configure EAM. What is the first step we need to do? Right, sir. So as part of your EAM configuration setup, the first, first one is you need to maintain the configuration parameters. What you need to maintain? You need to maintain the configuration parameter. 
So we have a configuration parameter related to EAM that needs to be maintained first. So what are the configuration parameters we have? And what is the purpose of each configuration parameter? Then how do you maintain that? That you need to un understand. Then go to SPRO, IMG. Sir, sir, you got the concept, right? So why we need to have a EAM? Sir, we have a tables to see all these firefighter IDs, who is the owner, who is the controller. I'll tell you what the uh, tomorrow class. Okay, let me configure first. So I'll tell you one by one in a sequential manner. Okay, no need to worry, sir. I'll, I'll cover everything in EAM. So you don't miss anything. So you understand, right? EAM concept, why EAM is required for business, how it works, yes, sir. What, are, what are all the users we have in EAM, and what is the responsibility of each user? Is it clear till now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, next is what? How do you configure EAM in a system? Is that we are doing now, correct? Right. As a part of configuration of EAM, what is the first step we need to do? We need to maintain the configuration parameter. parameter. Now I'll show you what is the configuration parameters we have for EAM and what is the purpose of each configuration par uh, parameter and how that works. Now, let me go to governance, risk and compliance. And let me go to access control. Where I have to go? Access control. Are you able to see maintain configuration settings here? Yes, sir. Now, go to maintain configuration settings. Now remember, so this is empty here now. Now I need to maintain the configuration settings related to EAM, correct? Because I want, I'm I'm doing a EAM related thing. Now go to a new entries, go to new entries and then you are able to see parameter group. So go to parameter group. What is your parameter group now? What parameters you want to add? Yes, management. Yes, management. Sir, we have a area related parameters you will learn in area class. We have a BRM related parameters we'll, you will learn in BRM. We have a ARM related parameters you will learn in ARM. But now we are implementing EAM so that we need to maintain the EAM related emergency as man. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If I open the parameter ID here, if I open the parameter ID here, so these are the EAM parameters. So EAM parameters are start with where? With 4000. 4000. So, sorry, EAM low make 4 and pay. Any parameter start with 4 except this, this one, sir. Only the 5033 except this one. Wherever you see, it's in 4000. All the 4000 parameters are related to EAM. EAM, except this 5033. Now, let me make you understand one by one parameter. Now, are you able to see application type here? Yes. 4000 is what? Application type. So, we have a two application type for your EAM configuration. So, one is ID based, second one is role based. <coughs> so, how many application types we have for EAM? ID based, role based. Role based and role based. Sir, if I keep one, then your EAM functionality is ID based. Then when I go and keep value as two, then your EAM functionality is role based. Role based. Now, what do you need to understand? What is difference between ID based and role based? The four thousand is what, sir? Application type. So EAM application type. EAM application type, what are the two types of application we have in EAM? ID based. ID roles. And role, role based. based. So remember, so it's, uh, let me make you understand. It's very important, sir. So even the inter most of the interviews will ask, what is the application type you use in your project, whether ID based or role based? And you ID say based. ID based. Now, then immediately you'll ask, what is the difference between ID based and role based? Role based. So whatever I'm teaching now, it's very important, this configuration parameter to understand your EAM clearly. So stop me if you have any doubts, so that I'll clear your doubt and we'll go further. Okay. The first thing, what you need to do, first thing, what we need to do to configure EAM, we need to maintain the parameters. parameters related to EAM. So in that process, we have a 4,000. What is the 4,000 application type? What are the types we have? What are the application types we have? ID base, role base. Role base. Role base. So remember. So ID based role based let, let me uh, come to ID based first and then we'll discuss about role based next. Remember for ID based, ID based means I can call as firefighter ID. So five ID based only one user can log in at a time. Yes or no? Only one user can log in. Yes, sir. Okay. Time. Okay. Remember if you are using role based for the same uh, thing, let me go with the role based here. For role based, so there is no separate ID is created, sir. So here we are creating a separate firefighter ID 
and whenever firefighter user require an extra access we are assigning firefighter id to firefighter yes sir no yes sir that is id based now if it is a role based will create a firefighter role not firefighter id so in pfcc will create a some critical role whoever the user required will assign the role directly to user then he will become a firefighter user getting it now yes sir now if sure. i assign a role to uh, two users or three users remember so multiple user can use the firefighter role at once multiple user can use firefighter role at once at a time at a time or at once whatever at once right because why means see i assign role to user 1 and user 2 and user 3 will be able to use the access of those role yes or no at a time yes sir they can able to use that is role based so got the so got the first difference between id based and role based so yes sir what is the, the first difference between id based and role based in id based only one user can access the pipe at ready at a time in role based if you assign multiple users yes, yeah. even multiple users can access ready. the pipe at role at once that's the first difference now let me go to second difference id based the second difference intent eh? so we can get to know exactly so we can know exactly so what we can know is we can know exactly when <coughs> firefighter id is being used is being used So remember, role based कुछ है सर की, role based कुछ सर की, it's hard or it's it's very hard to differentiate differentiate when user is using firefighter roles, firefighter roles. Sir, remember, sir, if I am using, sir, just this is a login mechanism, sir. Let me make you understand the login mechanism between ID based and role based. Let's say example, if I have ID based. firefighter user log into their own id first so how they log in they log into their own id after logging to their own id they again has to log into firefighter id getting my point now if you are using id based first firefighter users log into their own id first and then later they log into firefighter id right. that is there is two login mechanisms here yes or no yes sir so if they log into their own id whatever actions they do it's of their own access but at the time they access they log in to ffid whatever the actions they do that is used using by the ffid yes. yes or no yes that means we are clearly get to know when they exactly using the ffid and when they are using their own access that is a proper segregation in id based yes or no now you have a role to assign so user having their own roles in their roles they having su01 and you also assign the firefighter role in a firefighter role also there is a su01 now tell me now when a user if they don't need to log into separate id login once they log into their id their access will come in role based now if they execute su01 how do you differentiate whether this su01 is executing with their own access or with firefighter role access is it easy to differentiate when they are using ffid or when they are using their own access if it is a role based no sir so it's hard it's hard to differentiate when the user is using the firefighter roles but id based we know exactly when the firefighter id is being used that is the second difference so login mechanism ela untundi sir id based ikaithe first war id ki login avvali tarvata malli firefighter id ki login avvali role based ikaithe role directly ga user ki assign chesam kabatti just war id ki login aithe chalu malli separate login mechanism ledhu so that differentiating between their own access and firefighter id access is difficult in the role based and it's easy in the id based got it now yes sir yes sir now the third difference majorly i can see is logs so tracking of logs are easy here id based right tracking of logs are easy in id based when it comes to role based it's complex to It's complex to differentiate logs. Differentiate the logs from its own access or firefighter ID access. Yes or no? Is it clear? 
So we have with the reason codes. I'll show you, sir. This will be uh, when I'm logging into system as a firefighter executing, you'll understand this clearly. Okay, sir. It's no reason codes here. Right. So you remember this makes it three differences for ID based and role based. So what is the ID based and role based differences in ID based? Anyone, sir? There's three differences we can talk about in ID based and role based. What are those three? In ID based, only one user can log in at a time. Right. So you can go to bed, Kundi. You can even matter at a time. I'm logging Gurinchi matter at a time. And in code engine, Pemu, differentiation. Differentiation of accessing. Firefighter ID or role. This is the next to logs. This is the next to logs. This is the next to logs. So, login is the ID based. Only one user can log in to FFID at once. But role based? Multiple users. Multiple users can log in. Sir, multiple users can access the firefighter role at once if you, if you are assigned them. Yes or no? Correct. Next is what? We know exactly when the firefighter ID is using and when the zone access is using in ID based because we have a separate login mechanism again to ID based. Yes or no? Now, when it comes to a role based, it's hard to differentiate between the user is using the firefighter roles. When the user is using the firefighter role, it's hard to differentiate. And the third is the tracking of logs. The tracking of logs are easy in ID based and the tracking of logs are difficult or complex in the role based. Is it clear the difference between this ID based and role based? Any doubts here? Yes, sir. So this is a 4000 parameter. Now 4000 parameter I keep. So which one is good to go, sir? ID based or role based? ID based. ID based. ID based. How many ID based? How many role based? ID based. ID based. Sir, so remember it's not our choice at that. We need to explain the both pros and cons of a ID based and role based. Then business has to decide. The client has to decide what they want to go with. If they want to go with role based, you have to configure the role based EAM. If they want to go with ID based, you have to configure the ID based EAM. But remember, most of the projects, wherever I see, it's a ID based only. Is it clear? But again, yes, who is taking who is taking the decision? Who takes the decision? Business. They will take a decision. Clear? Yes. Right. So what parameter we discussed, sir? We discussed the parameter of 4000. What is the 4000 parameter? Application? Type. Type. What are the values we have? Roller ID, roller. ID, ID based, role based. based. Role based. If we keep one, 4000 value as one, that is ID based. If we keep 4000 value as two, that is? Role based. Role based. Let me go to our next one.
can I say server becomes too slow? Oh, no. Right. So, how do you maintain parameters? Go to SPRO and then IMG, IMG, GRC, X, GRC. Okay, one minute. We'll go one by one. Server becomes slow, sir. Not yeah. sure. Okay. So, GRC, GRC. Then access control, sir. Access control. Maintain configuration, sir. So access control, then maintain configuration, configuration setting. settings. Now first it will be empty. So then save CLS got entry ni the save under the so we need to save after the maintaining the value. Let me switch my network, okay, one minute. Sir, are you able to hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I just switch my network, we'll see whether it's because of internet issue or the server is too slow. It's not internet problems and the server is too slow now. Okay, let me explain a few parameters directly here. Okay, so 4000 is done right now. So we have a next is 4001. So 4001 parameter is default firefighter validity period. So what do you mean by default firefighter validity periods? So following, am I edible? Yes, sir. So I'll show you in the system, but let me first uh, explain the parameter, then I'll maintain in the system. Okay. 4001, what is the parameter of 4001? Default firefighter validity period. What do you mean by that? Let's say example, if I keep three days, if I keep three days here, default firefighter validity period parameter, if I keep value as three, then what will happen is whenever you assign any firefighter ID to firefighter user, by default, it will take three days. If you do not make, make the change the values, by default, it will take three days. And if you want to decrease it to one day, you can decrease it to one day. And if you want to increase it to five days, 
if you, you can increase it to five days as well. But when you assign firefighter ID to firefighter user, by default, what is the value it will take? Three days. The, the value you maintain in the four thousand one parameter. Okay. Clear. So what is the four thousand one parameter? Default access firefighter validity period. Default firefighter validity period. Three days. Right. So the value I'm saying is I can make it three days, but if I make it five days in the in the list, what will happen? So default validity period will be five days. If you make one, it will be one day. So it's just a value we need to maintain based on your business requirement. Three, four, or five, whatever the value it is. Now what will happen is if I maintain any value here, when you assign FFID to firefighter user, by default it take the same value. That means same days only it will take. But if you want to increase, you can increase, or if you want to decrease, you can decrease. But if you don't want to do anything. By default, it'll take the value which is you maintain in the four thousand one. Is it clear? Yes, sir. No, sir. Yes. Let me go to SPRO. IMC. GRC. Access control. Maintain configuration settings. Now go to new entries. Select the parameter group as the emergency access management and the parameter ID. I'm searching for parameter ID. First, I'll go with the four thousand. Four thousand I keep as a. Right, sir. So, make update here is easy. Select just on one bit. Control ID based out of the two bit control based out of the next four thousand. Select just on it. Are you able to see default firefighter validity? Yeah, sure. So you can keep three. Or based on your business requirement, you can keep the value. What will happen is when you assign a firefighter to user, by default, it takes the same value whatever you maintain in the four thousand one. Is it clear? Yes, sir. So remember. We have a four thousand two and four thousand eight. <coughs> These are the parameters four thousand two and four thousand eight. Now, if I can see, what is the four thousand two? Send email immediately. Now, four thousand eight. What is the four thousand eight? Send firefighter login notification. Notification. Remember, four thousand two and four thousand eight are related to firefighter ID login notification. Login notification. And also, we have a Four thousand eight and four thousand nine. Sorry, four thousand seven and four thousand nine. Are you able to see four thousand seven? What is the four thousand seven value here? Send the log report. Execution log report. Immediately. Immediately. And four thousand nine is log report notification. Log report notification. Immediately. Now, what will happen? This four thousand seven and four thousand nine. This is a firefighter ID log report notification. Sir, so login notification where you and log report notification where you. Sir, so if I keep yes four thousand two and four thousand eight, what will happen is at the moment firefighter user log into a firefighter ID, a immediate notification will be sent to the owner saying that this user is logged into this firefighter ID on this time. Getting my point? Yes, sir. A email notification will be sent to owner. Saying that this particular user is logged into this particular FFID at this time, immediately a notification will be sent to them, owner. Now, if I make four thousand seven, four thousand nine, yes. One now, once the login is completed, once the firefighter ID has, once the firefighter user has been executed his activities using firefighter ID, then immediately a log report notification will be sent to controller saying that the user has been performed these activities. Log is ready for your review. Getting my point? Yes, sir. So, four thousand two, four thousand eight is for log firefighter ID login notification, and four thousand seven and four thousand nine are for firefighter ID log, log report, report notification. So, in real time projects, also we'll keep four thousand two, four thousand eight, four thousand seven, four thousand nine as yes. Why? Because at a time firefighter user log into firefighter ID, a immediate notification has to send to owner. But when logs are ready for review, 
a notification has to send for controller for review. Is that clear? Yes, sir. If you keep no 4002, 4008, 4007, 4009, no birthday, email notifications are allowed. Owner key controller key. Login notifications are allowed. Log report notifications are allowed. While the manual go check chess con choose quality report law. Is that clear? Yes, sir. This yes. parameter is just to send an email notifications to them for their review purpose. <coughs> Is that clear? Yes, sir. Sure. Oh, what we covered? We covered 4000. We covered 4001. We covered 4002879. Is it clear? All this? Yes, sir. Sure. Sure. Remember, we have a 403456. All these, right? Remember, 4003 is related to change log. 4004 is related to system logs. 4005 is related to audit logs. And 4006 is related to OS command logs. Now, it's what are the one is your change logs and next is your system logs and next is your what audit log and next is your os command log sir what will happen is so if a firefighter user log into firefighter id he might be changing something right maybe document in here then he changes age not so so if you do not enable change logs you cannot able to see change logs in the report. The controller, you means the controller will not able to see the change logs. If any firefighter users made the changes in the system level, those system logs will not be available if you do not make as S. So audit logs and OS command logs, these are the same. So then what you need to do, sir? We need to make all these logs as yes. So 4003 is a change log. Retrieve change log, 4004 is a retrieve system log, 4005 is a retrieve audit log, 4006 is a retrieve voice command log. Yes, command log. What do you need to make all these parameters? Yes or no? Yes. Yes, because we need to yes. retrieve the, all the logs which are executed by the firefighter. Yes or no? Yes, sir. <laughs> so, Miku configuration chase, firefighter to login IE. Activity session that the money log out. I reports open Jason that are to be sir. What is change log? What is system log? What is audit log? What is OS command log? Okay, no, no, remember no. all these logs should be turned yes. All this parameter to be able to see the change logs, to be able to see the system logs, to be able to see the audit logs, and to be able to see the OS command log. Is that clear? Yes, sir. So, till now, what we covered, sir? 4000 is what application type ID based on role based on one into ID based and two into. Role based and 4001 4, is what default firefighter ID validity period. Yeah. So, good practices to go with three days. Three days, three. Will be good practices. Every, everyone will follow this good practice. And then 4002 and 4008. Firefighter ID is login notification. Login notification. Okay, 4007 and 4009. Report notifications. Report. FFID, FFID report log. Log, log, log report. Log report. Log report notification. Then 4003. Uh, change retrieve change log. Retrieve change log. 4004 retrieve system log. 4005 retrieve retrieve audit log. Audit log. And 4006 retrieve OS operation. Uh, OS system. command log. Uh, operation. OS command log. OS, OS command log. Is it clear now all these parameters? Now, so from 4002, 4009 are done. Correct? Now, so the next one is 4010. Next one is 4010. What is the 4010? Firefighter ID? Role? Name. Name. Sir, remember, it's very important, sir. Most of you interviews will ask this 4010 parameter. What is the 4010? <coughs> Firefighter ID? Role name. Sir, remember the firefighter IDs. Sir, where the emergency access will happen? ECC or GRC? Across the emergency situation, sir. GRC. GRC, no, no. Sir, where business is happens? GRC. ECC, sir. ECC. When the business is, is happening in ECC, where the emergency situations will arise? Sir, across the business there will be the emergency situations. ECC. ECC, no, no. Right? ECC, no, no. Emergency situations are there. Now. Access sector provide the alley user is the emergency situation of the GRC provide the alley is the provide the alley is so that's how that's why your firefighter ID is also created in your backend system. A create just the firefighter ID is any product is 
సిస్టమ్ లోనే క్రియేట్ చేస్తారు బట్ మ్యాపింగ్ విల్ బి డన్ ఇన్ జిఆర్సి జిఆర్సి ఇస్ ఇట్ క్లియర్ సో నేను చూపిస్తాను మీకు ఈసిస్ లో క్రియేట్ చేసిన తర్వాత రిపాజిటరీ సింక్ జాబ్ చేస్తే ఈ యూజర్ లిస్ట్ అంతా వస్తుంది వచ్చిన తర్వాత ఎలా మ్యాప్ చేయాలని మొత్తం చూపిస్తా జిఆర్సి లో బట్ రిమెంబర్ ఎక్కడ మనం క్రియేట్ చేస్తాం పర్ఫెక్ట్ ఐడీస్ ఆల్వేస్ ఈసిస్ ఆకెన్ సిస్టమ్ వాట్ ఎవర్ ఇట్ ఇస్ సార్ ఈసిస్ ఈసిసి బిఐ టు బి బిఐ నౌ మ్యాపింగ్ ఎక్కడ చేయాలి రో because of this 4010 role remember there is a role name called the standard role name i am giving sir sap underscore underscore pawn it is another one but you keep underscore grac underscore yes, spm underscore ffid this is the role name what is the role name sap underscore grac grac underscore spm underscore ffid this need to be maintained in the 4010 role and once you maintain the once you maintain this role in 4010 role you need to maintain the same role in all 55 ids in the back end system now if i assign this role in the back end system to 55 id then it will your gr system will identify as a 55 id otherwise it will not identify and em lesa ikkada gurtu pettukuntunnam 4010 lo oka role name pettukoni grc lo same role ye users kaithe back end lo untundo avanni kuda 55 id ga treat chestadi mee grc system is it clear నార్మల్ సర్వీస్ యూజర్ what is the role name that we we have a standard role name that we have maintained sap underscore grac underscore spm underscore ff5 now ikkada meer g role idi copy cheskon g role kuda maintain chesukochu sir kani em cheyali ikkada a role aithe maintain chestara 4010 lo back end ff5 ki same role maintain cheyali appude mee grc system deeni 55 id ga recognize chestundi otherwise no is it clear yes sir so this role will call also called as identifier role is it clear Yes, sir. Sir, if 4010, then I'll go for 4015, sir. So, this is very important. Sir, remaining is not that much important. More of the, the focus is 4001, sorry, 4000, 4001, and then 4010, and then 4015. These parameters are frequently equal to interval value parameters, sir. Okay. Now, what is the claim? 4012. ఏ ఏ యూజర్స్ కి ఆడిట్ లాగ్స్ ఫార్వర్డ్ చేయొచ్చు నేను కంట్రోలర్ కి నాకు లాగ్స్ వచ్చాయి సార్ ఐ గాట్ ఎ లాగ్స్ యాజ్ ఎ కంట్రోలర్ ఐ గాట్ ఎ లాగ్స్ నేను ఎవరెవరికి ఫార్వర్డ్ చేయొచ్చు ఎంత మంది యూజర్స్ కి ఫార్వర్డ్ చేయొచ్చు లాగ్స్ అనే దాన్ని ఇక్కడ పెట్టాలి వన్ యూజర్ కా టూ యూజర్ కా అనేది ఇక్కడ మెయింటైన్ చేసుకోవాలి ఎవరెవరికి ఎంత మందికి చేయాలి అని దట్ దట్స్ ఓకే దిస్ నాట్ దాట్ మచ్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ అండ్ రిమెం రిమెంబర్ సి ఇయర్ థర్టీన్ అండ్ ఫోర్టీన్ ఎనీబడి కెన్ రీడ్ దిస్ థర్టీన్ ఎనీబడి ఫైటర్ ఐడి ఓనర్ కెన్ సబ్మిట్ రిక్వెస్ట్ ఫర్ ఫైర్ ఫైటర్ ఐడి ఓనర్ సో రైట్ సో ఫైర్ ఫైటర్ ఐడి ఓనర్ వాడి ఓన్ ఫైర్ ఫైటర్ ఐడికి రిక్వెస్ట్ సబ్మిట్ చేసుకోవచ్చు అవ్వడానికి ఎస్ సార్ నో ఇస్ ఇట్ అలౌడ్ ఆర్ నాట్ సార్ అర్థమైంది ఆ క్వశ్చన్ ఐఎమ్ ద ఓనర్ ఫర్ వన్ ఆఫ్ ద ఫైర్ ఫైటర్ ఐడి బట్ కెన్ ఐ రేజ్ యాక్సెస్ ఫర్ మై ఓన్ ఫైర్ ఫైటర్ ఐడి ఆర్ నాట్ కెన్ ఐ సబ్మిట్ రిక్వెస్ట్ ఫర్ మై ఓన్ ఫైర్ ఫైటర్ ఐడి ఆర్ నాట్ పెడితేనే అలౌ చేస్తాను సార్ గుడ్ ప్రాక్టీస్ ఇస్ నో సార్ ఎందుకంటే నేను రిక్వెస్ట్ సబ్మిట్ చేస్తే అప్రూవల్ ఎవరికి వెళ్తుంది ఓనర్ అగైన్ ఎవరు నేనే కదా ఇస్ ఇట్ గుడ్ ప్రాక్టీస్ టు సబ్మిట్ అండ్ అప్రూవ్ మై ఓన్ రిక్వెస్ట్ టు మై సెల్ఫ్ గుడ్ సో దట్స్ వై ఫోర్ థౌజండ్ థర్టీన్ నో పెట్టుకుంటాము నౌ ద సేమ్ వే ఫోర్ థౌజండ్ ఫోర్టీన్ ఫైర్ ఫైటర్ ఐడి కంట్రోలర్ క్యాన్ సబ్మిట్ రిక్వెస్ట్ ఫర్ ఫైర్ ఫైటర్ ఐడి కంట్రోల్ ఎస్ సార్ నో నో ఇది కూడా నో సార్ ఎందుకంటే నేను సబ్మిట్ చేసిన అప్రూవల్ కేమో ఓనర్కి వెళ్తుంది బట్ నేను చేసిన లాక్స్ అన్ని మళ్ళీ ఎవరికి వస్తాయి నాకే వస్తాయి కదా బికాస్ ఐఎమ్ ద కంట్రోలర్ ఫర్ మై కంట్రోల్ మై ఐడి కరెక్ట్ 
సో నేను ఏదైనా చేసి నా లక్ష్యం నేను అప్రూవ్ చేసుకోవచ్చా లేదా ఇట్ ఇస్ గుడ్ టు గో విత్ దిస్ ఫోర్ థౌసండ్ థర్టీన్ ద ఫైర్ ఫైటర్ ఐడి ఓనర్ క్యాన్ సబ్మిట్ రిక్వెస్ట్ ఫర్ ఫైర్ ఫైటర్ ఐడి ఓన్ సో మోస్ట్ ఆఫ్ ద ప్రాజెక్ట్ విల్ కీప్ నో అండ్ ద కంట్రోలర్ ఆల్సో నో బట్ ఇఫ్ ద బిజినెస్ బిజినెస్ సేస్ సార్ ఇట్స్ నాట్ యువర్ డిసిషన్ సార్ అగైన్ ఇఫ్ ఇఫ్ ఎ బిజినెస్ సేస్ ఓకే యూ కెన్ అల్లో ఫైర్ ఫైటర్ ఐడి ఓనర్ టు యూస్ దేన్ ఓన్ ఐడీస్ సో యూ కెన్ అల్లో ఫైర్ ఫైటర్ కంట్రోలర్ టు యూస్ దేర్ ఓన్ ఐడీస్ దట్స్ ఓకే ఫర్ మీ అండ్ బిజినెస్ అంటే యూ కెన్ కీప్ దీస్ వాల్యూస్ ఆర్ ఎస్ క్లియర్ సో దిస్ ఇస్ ఆల్ అబౌట్ యువర్ ఫోర్ థౌసండ్ థర్టీన్ అండ్ ఫోర్టీన్ సో ఇస్ దట్ క్లియర్ టిల్ నో వాల్యూస్ ఫోర్ థౌసండ్ వన్ టు ఫోర్ థౌసండ్ థర్టీన్ ఇన్ఫర్మేషన్మెంట్స్మెంట్ Yes or no? Following? Yes, sir. Now, the 4015. It's very important, sir. 4015. What is 4015? So, 4015 is enable decentralized pie fighting. So, enable decentralized. What do you mean by decentralized and centralized? So, then you put decentralized and TNT. And centralized and TNT. సార్ నేను ఎస్ పెట్టుకుంటే ఇది సెంట్రలైజ్ అవుతుందా డిసెంట్రలైజ్ అవుతుందా ఫోర్ జీరో వన్ ఫైవ్ డిసెంట్రలైజ్డ్ సార్ సెంట్రలైజ్ కి డిసెంట్రలైజ్ డిఫరెన్స్ ఏంటంటే లెట్స్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ ఐ హ్ జిఆర్సి సిస్టమ్ అండ్ ఐ కనెక్టెడ్ ఈసిసి సిస్టమ్ ఐ కనెక్టెడ్ బిఐ సిస్టమ్ ఐ కనెక్టెడ్ బిపిసి సిస్టమ్ లెట్స్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ దీస్ త్రీ సిస్టమ్ ఐ కనెక్టెడ్ టు మై జిఆర్సి సిస్టమ్ ఫర్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ నా సో సెంట్రలైజ్ ఏఎం అయితే centralized em aithe file fighter users will log into grc system getting my point ekkada login avtaru file fighter users andar ekkada login avtaru grc system ki login avtaru valaki ee ee backend system lo file fighter ids unnayo avanni kuda grc system lo kanapadtayi meek chupistan sir launch pad open chestunte akkada kanapadtayi now if i want to log into ecc ffid i can select the ecc ffid so that i can log in remotely to ecc if i want to log into bi ffid i can select the bi ffid from grc so that i can remotely log into bi if i want to log into bpc system ffid i can select the bpc ffid so that i can log into bpc system that means from one central system i can able to access the any of the backend systems got it now that is centralized decentralized ante enti decentralized em aithe fire fighter user who has to log into respective backend system if i want to do file fighting in ecc i need to log into ecc and execute the one t code i'll tell you the t codes and if i want to log into bi i need to log into bi if i want to log into bpc i need to log into bpc that is your decentralized is it clear sir <coughs> yes sir no so login mechanism marks and remember if it is decent centralized aithe if i configure G, if i configure em in central system that is C, grc that that will automatically apply for your all the backend system configuration now if it is decentralized you need to configure your eam in all the each and every respective backend systems got it now <laughs> so central system lo fire fighter users a system ki login avtaru centralized lo the login to grc from grc they can able to access any of the backend system backend system that means సో సెంట్రల్ గా సెంట్రల్ సిస్టమ్ సార్ రిమెంబర్ సెంట్రలైజ్ అంటే సెంట్రల్ సిస్టమ్ కి లాగిన్ అవుతారు సెంట్రల్ సిస్టమ్ అంటే ఏంటి ఇక్కడ జిఆర్సి జిఆర్సి సో సెంట్రలైజ్డ్ లో ఫైర్ ఫైటర్ యూజర్ విల్ లాగ్ ఇన్ టు జిఆర్సి ఫ్రమ్ జిఆర్సి దే కెన్ ఎబుల్ టు లాగ్ ఇన్ ద రెస్పెక్టివ్ బ్యాక్ అండ్ సిస్టమ్ ఎఫ్ ఫైవ్ డేస్ ఇన్ వన్ సెంట్రల్ లాంచ్ ప్యాడ్ ఓకే ఇఫ్ ఇట్ ఇస్ డిసెంట్రలైజ్ వాట్ వాట్ ఫైర్ ఫైటర్ హస్ టు డూ ఇఫ్ దే వాంట్ టు పర్ఫామ్ యాక్టివిటీస్ ఇన్ ఈసిసి దే నీడ్ టు లాగ్ ఇన్ టు ఈసిసి ఇఫ్ దే వాంట్ టు పర్ఫామ్ యాక్టివిటీస్ ఇన్ బిఐ దే నీడ్ టు లాగ్ ఇన్ టు bi that means they log into each respective backend system for decentralized is it clear yes sir another thing is configuration point of view lo ante admin configuration point of view lo centralized aithe 
if i configure eim in grc system that will apply for all your <coughs> backend system Back you no need to configure your eim in each and every system if it is centralized you configure in grc that applies all your backend system that is centralized now for decentralized admin has to configure eim in each and every backend system got it now so what the difference between centralized and decentralized now yes sir what is the advantage of decentralized what is the disadvantage of sir what is the disadvantage of centralized centralized ki disadvantage cheppandi and what is the advantage of decentralized now remember if the gr system is down so let's say example sir my gr system is as down now i want to perform emergency activities in ecc will i able to do that emergency act activities in ecc if the central system is down in centralized no no sir why because in centralized user first has to access to which system grc 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 system itself is down will i able to access the firebyte ids in the backend system centralized no okay. disadvantage in centralized is if the central system is down the firefighters will not able to access the emergency access in the respective backend system that is a disadvantage of centralized now coming to decentralized even though the central system is down will the firefighter able to access the emergency access management yes sir because in decentralized users will log into respective backend system not grc correct yes or no sir yes sir so that is possible that is the advantage with decentralized now which is the, which is the best one centralized or decentralized 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 we said it is centralized so decentralized kelte admin has to configure eim in all the systems correct any systems and any system i'm taking those taking yes or no and also firefighters ki oka central launch pad nunchi annitni access cheskoledu a system lo jalante a system login avuthu undali is it good oh sir some part difficult so which one is better Sir, remember here there is no favorite for us. It's again the according to business business requirement. If they want to go with the centralized, we go with the centralized. If they want to go with decentralized, we go with the decentralized. That's it. Clear? But you should know that the differences between centralized and decentralized. Is it clear? Sir. Right, sir. So I'll go and maintain the parameters now. So four thousand, I'll maintain. Slogan sir, four thousand name maintain just some basic application type. ID based maintain just some. ID based. Four thousand one. What is the default good practices? Three days maintain just some. Now four thousand two, eight, seven and nine expect kunta. And three, four, five, six also will keep. Yes, yes or no? And four zero one zero limit kunta sir. Firebat ID. Role name. So what is the purpose of four zero one zero role? What is the purpose of four zero one zero parameter? To differentiate between the other roles and the firefighter. Other IDs. So differentiate your firefighter IDs between other users because firefighter ID could a service user ekda. Right? So there is a identification. GRC identify cheyali ante. बैक एंड फैर फैटर ऐडी की फोर जीरो वन जीरो मेटा रोल मेटे जीआरसी फैर फैटर ऐडी ऐडेंटी इज क्लियर सिस्टम चला स्लोके सर सो यू अंडरस्ट का पारामीटर्स सो मेटिंग इज वेरी ईजी सर जस्ट वन मिनट टू मिनट पड़ती अभी लागन अन तरह मेटे क्लोज टू मोरो वाट वि I'll create a owners. I'll create a firefighter IDs. I'll create controllers. I'll create firefighters, and I'll I'll show you how to map firefighter IDs to owner, how to map firefighter IDs to controller, and how to map firefighter IDs to firefighters. If you choose which, I'll log in with the firefighter ID. Firefighter ID, firefighter user ID to log in. I I'll use the firefighter ID. Then I'll log out, and I'll show you the report. How the report will come to controller. Okay. Okay, sir. So for today, you just understand what is the concept of firefighter ID, what is the why we why it is benefit to organization, and what are the users we have in EAM, and what is the responsibility of each user, 
and then what is the purpose of all the configuration parameters in EAM? So is it clear till now? Yes, sir. <laughs> so tomorrow we'll start creating owners, we'll start creating controller, we'll start creating IDs, we'll yes, mapping, sir. and we'll log in with the IDs. Let's show you the report, how the report will work, how the firefighters will work. Okay. The clear. Okay. So by tomorrow you'll okay. understand entire EAM. But for today, you still have a confusion, but understand whatever the topics that covered till today. Okay. okay. So go to SPRO IMG GRC GRC Access Control Maintain our relationship settings and new entries EAM RC so four thousand right parameter yes. four thousand this is I'll select as ID based right application type is ID based again you select the Emergency access management. Next is 4001. What is 4001? Value. Actually, three days. Value is three days. Default firefighter validity period, three days. And next is emergency access management. Then 4002 to 6. 4009. Parameters 4002. You keep as yes. So, you can select yes. You can select small number. You can get yes or no to the SLA. Yes. Enter. The same way. So you need to maintain the parameter like this, sir. 4010. If I want to maintain 4010, go to 4010. What is the five factor ID role name you need to maintain? SAP underscore. GRAC underscore. SAP underscore. GRAC underscore. GRAC. Underscore. Underscore. SPM underscore. FFID. ID. So this is the role name we maintain for 4010. Clear? And same role will be assigned to all the FFIDs in the backend system. Then only your GR system will identify those as a firefighter ID. Otherwise, it will identify only as a normal users. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Now, 4015. If I go to 4015, what is 4015? Enable. Decentralized firefighting. Yes or no? Yes, sir. So 4015. Enable decentralized firefighting. Now, if I keep S, yes, what will happen? It will be centralized and decentralized. Yes, but decentralized. Right. Control. So I want to configure with centralized. Okay. Go with the no. No, but they want me. It's a centralized. Centralized. Control. Yes, but they want decentralized. Decentralized. Sir, EAM low. What is the difference between ID based and role based? Or what is the difference between centralized and decentralized? Got it now? Difference. Yes, sir. Now you can maintain any number of parameters you want. Sir, main ga 4000. Four, sir, if you are using role based, if you are using role based data of ID here, do you need to maintain 4010? Nice as okay, sir. If I'm going with the role based, take two pattern role based, role based, is the any criminally four zero one zero parameter maintain in our No, no, it's only applied for ID based to identify the IDs. Got it? Yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, sir. So making the parameters mirror any pet coach, my emergency access management. 4002 pattern, 4008 is pet call and pundi. Select 4008. So, any kuda, 3, 4, 5, 6 kuda, select chest on itla. Go and select the yes. Clear now how to maintain the parameters, configuration parameters? Sir, of course, decentralizer, centralizer job. Chapter, sir, chapter. So, you maintain like these parameters and finally you click on save. After saving it, it will ask for the customizing request. So you need to add this as a customizing to the same customizing request. Right. So I'm saving the entries. Now, so centralized key, decentralized key, chapal and descent. Remember, so configuration gurinch matter the differences law. So for centralized, if I configure EAM in central system, that applies for all your backend system. Back Is it clear now? Now, to decentralized, I need to configure EAM in each and every 
back and sister is it clear first difference is clear yes sir now second difference the file fighter uses log into grc system and from grc systems they can able to access any of the back end system ffids from one central launch pad is it clear okay sir అంటే వన్ లాగిన్ అయ్యి జిఆర్సీకి సెంట్రల్ సిస్టమ్ కి లాగిన్ అయితే ఈ వన్ లాగిన్ నుంచి సెంట్రల్ లాంచ్ ప్యాడ్ లో బిఐ కావాలంటే బిఐకి లాగిన్ అవ్వచ్చు ఈసీసీ కావాలంటే ఈసీసీకి లాగిన్ అవ్వచ్చు బీపీసీ కావాలంటే బీపీసీకి లాగిన్ అవ్వచ్చు బికాస్ ఇట్స్ సెంట్రలైజ్డ్ సో ఆల్ యువర్ అసైన్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ ఎఫ్ఐడిస్ విల్ బి షోన్ ఇన్ వన్ లాంచ్ ప్యాడ్ వన్ సెంట్రల్ లాంచ్ ప్యాడ్ ఓకే సో ఫైర్ పేటర్ యూజర్స్ కెన్ ఏబుల్ టు యాక్సెస్ ద ఆల్ ఆఫ్ యువర్ బ్యాక్ అండ్ సిస్టమ్ ఫ్రమ్ వన్ సెంట్రల్ లాంచ్ ప్యాడ్ అండ్ నౌ ఇఫ్ ఇట్ ఇస్ డీ సెంట్రలైజ్డ్ ఫైర్ ఫైటర్ యూజర్స్ హాస్ టు లాగ్ ఇన్ టు రెస్పెక్టివ్ back end system to login is it clear second difference okay now what is advantage of decentralized even though the central system is down users can still able to access the firefighter ids yes or no in decentralized what is the disadvantage of centralized yes sir what is the disadvantage of centralized If the central system is down, we cannot able to access the emergency management in the respective backend system. That is the disadvantage of centralized. Is it clear? Yes, sir. So, still have any doubt? So, transport pop-up person saves you a step to continue. So, my entry is saved. But you can know, my main game is 4,000. 4,000. వన్ ఫోర్ జీరో వన్ జీరో ఫోర్ జీరో వన్ ఫైవ్ అవి మెయిన్ సార్ చాలా ఇంపార్టెంట్ బట్ రివైనింగ్ కూడా నేర్చుకోండి ఓపెన్ చేసి చూడండి సార్ సో ఇట్ ఇట్స్ వెరీ ఈజీ యూ కెన్ గో టు మెయింటైన్ కాన్ఫిగరేషన్ సెట్టింగ్స్ సో నేను ఏం చేయొచ్చు ఇప్పుడు మీరు ఇట్లాగే వెళ్ళండి మెయింటైన్ కాన్ఫిగరేషన్ సెట్టింగ్స్కి వెళ్ళండి సో గో టు న్యూ ఎంట్రీస్ సార్ సేమ్ క్లయింట్లో కదా ఒక ఎంట్రీని ఒకసారి ఎవరైనా మెయింటైన్ చేశారనుకోండి మళ్ళీ మీరు సేమ్ ఎంట్రీ మెయింటైన్ చేసి సేవ్ చేస్తే ఆల్రెడీ ఎగ్జిస్ట్ అని వస్తుంది సార్ సో మీరు మళ్ళీ సేవ్ చేయాల్సిన అవసరం లేదు జస్ట్ మెయింటైన్ చేయడం చూసుకోండి చాలా సో గో టు న్యూ ఎంట్రీస్ అగైన్ సో ఇట్లా సెలెక్ట్ చేసుకోండి ఎమర్జెన్సీ యాక్సెస్ మేనేజ్మెంట్ అండ్ గో వన్ బై వన్ రీడ్ ఆల్ దీస్ పారామీటర్స్ అండ్ రిమెంబర్ ఆల్ దీస్ పారామీటర్స్ ఎంట్రీస్ ఇచ్చి సేవ్ చేస్తే మాత్రం ఆల్రెడీ ఒకరు చేసేస్తే మిగతా వాళ్ళకి ఆల్రెడీ ఎగ్జిస్ట్ అని వస్తుంది ఇట్స్ ఓకే సార్ మీరు క్యాన్సిల్ చేసుకోండి ఎవరైనా ఒకరు చేసినా పర్లేదు సిస్టమ్ లో బట్ ఇక్కడ దాకా మీరు చేయొచ్చు సెలెక్ట్ చేసుకుని మెయింటైన్ చేసే వరకు మీరు చేయొచ్చు తర్వాత క్యాన్సిల్ చేసుకోండి ఇస్ ఇట్ క్లియర్ Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This, this is the one-time setup, sir. This is not a regular activity. This is also one-time setup. Yeah. Okay. So, you go through all these parameters. Sir, you can run a survey. So, 4025. Are you able to see? Restrict firefighter validity period during access request. So, access sir. request firefighter user submit it up to firefighter ID key. How much pet quality max? You can use pet quality, sir. 4025 pet quality. ఇక్కడ నేను త్రీ డేస్ పెట్టాను అనుకోండి ఫోర్ జీరో ఫోర్ డబల్ జీరో వన్ లో త్రీ డేస్ కంటే ఎక్కువ వాడు ఎక్స్టెండ్ చేసుకోవడానికి ట్రై చేసిన యాక్సెస్ రిక్వెస్ట్ లో అలో చేయదు ఇంకా సో ఫోర్ జీరో టూ ఫైవ్ ఎస్ పెడితే బేస్డ్ ఆన్ యువర్ ఫోర్ థౌజండ్ వన్ వాల్యూ ఓన్లీ ఇట్ విల్ వర్క్ సో ఇట్ విల్ నాట్ అలో యూజర్ టు ఎక్స్టెండ్ ద వాలిడిటీ పీరియడ్ మోర్ దాన్ ద ఫోర్ థౌజండ్ వన్ వాల్యూ ఇక్కడ త్రీ పెడితే ఇక్కడ త్రీ డేస్ కంటే ఎక్కువ ఎక్స్టెండ్ చేసుకోలేదు రిక్వెస్ట్ సబ్మిట్ చేసేటప్పుడు ఇస్ అ క్లియర్ నా ఫోర్ ఫైవ్ జీరో డబల్ త్రీ హలో ఫైర్ ఫైటర్స్ విత్ నో కంట్రోలర్ సార్ ఇది నేను ఎస్ పెట్టుకుంటే ఏమవుతుంది కంట్రోలర్ లేకపోయినా ఫైర్ ఫైటర్ ఐడీస్ ని ఫైర్ ఫైటర్స్ యాక్సెస్ చేసుకోగలుగుతారు ఎస్ సార్ ఇస్ ఇట్ ఎ గుడ్ ప్రాక్టీస్ టు యూజ్ ఎస్ ఐడీస్ విత్ కంట్రోలర్ ఎస్ సార్ నో సార్ వీ షుడ్ నాట్ అలో ఫైర్ ఫైటర్స్ వితౌట్ కంట్రోలర్ బికాస్ లాక్స్ హాస్ టు బి రివ్యూడ్ బై ద కంట్రోలర్ బట్ మీ మీ ప్రాజెక్ట్ లో పెట్టుకోవాలనుకుంటే అవసరం లేదనుకుంటే ఎస్ పెట్టుకోవచ్చు సార్ ఇక్కడ సో ఎస్ఐపి ఇస్ గివింగ్ ఆల్ ద ఆప్షన్స్ బట్ బేస్డ్ ఆన్ యువర్ ప్రాజెక్ట్ రిక్వైర్మెంట్ యూ సెలెక్ట్ దిస్ కస్టమైజేషన్ ఇస్ అ క్లియర్ సో గో త్రూ ఆల్ దీస్ పారామీటర్స్ గో త్రూ ద ఈచ్ యూజర్ అండ్ దేర్ రెస్పాన్సిబిలిటీస్ అండ్ ద పర్పస్ ఆఫ్ ఏఎం ఫర్ టుడే టుమారో విల్ స్టార్ట్ క్రియేటింగ్ యూజర్స్ మ్యాపింగ్ ద ఎఫ్ఐడిస్ అండ్ యూజింగ్ ద హౌ టు యూజ్ ఎఫ్ఎఫ్ ఐడి how the logs will be generated i'll show you everything tomorrow okay okay sir any doubts sir till now no sir yeah. so please share the notes i have one doubt please sir let me go back okay
అంతే అవసరం లేదు నాకు హలో ఐ హ్యావ్ వన్ డౌట్ కెన్ ఆల్ గో టు మ్యూట్ ఓన్లీ వన్ పర్సన్ ఉంటా Yes, sir. Are you able to hear, hear me? Yes. What is your doubt? Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yeah, if it is a role base, how we will know the roles are fire, firefighter roles or normal roles? What is it? If it is a role based, how to identify it is a firefighter role or normal role in back end system so that's what so you should have a proper role role naming conventions correct mm-hmm. okay so we, follow, we follow the role naming conventions like like what what i can say for your normal load z underscore fico underscore like that same way you maintain your firefighter role name convention as ff so let's say I, i'll tell you okay once i submit a note here i'll like tell you sir it's not working with notes is not uh, getting copy and paste here notes placed over the chat lo um, okay we have a notes sir we have a good notes sir is going to be shared with you soon okay yes okay so a uh, naming convention and kada so we'll uh, have a role naming conventions like this okay let's say example if i am creating a firefighter roles so z underscore underscore is not working ff underscore fico1 next role will be like z underscore firefighter underscore fico2 these are the firefighter role naming conventions the role itself by seeing the role name itself i can get no okay these are the firefighter roles okay sir. okay and also we have a one more thing here so this is so nobody uses the firefighter role role based firefighting but if you can go go to the emergency access management in the access control but are able to see maintain firefighter id role name for connector yes sir so you have to maintain each firefighter role against your connector here then only your grc system recognize those roles are the firefighter roles. so target connector your connector name and then your role name your connector name and role name so bi connector ki bi roles ecc connector ki ecc firefighter roles ikkada match chestunta role based aithe is it clear but this is not required when you are using id based yes it's clear any doubts is it unfortunately i'm not able to i'll try to pasting the notes so just uh, wait a moment this works here it's it's getting pasting now so are you getting notes in chat yes sir okay sir so parameter you can go and uh, see directly in the system sir okay you understand based on the name itself okay yes sir. so we can log out for today so let's read the what is the purpose of eam why we are using eam what is the benefit of eam to organization and the, what are the users we have in eam and each user responsibility and what is the configuration parameters we have in eam what is the purpose of each configuration parameter so understand those things today and tomorrow i'll show you how to create a users how to map the firefighter id to user how to use the firefighter id and how to we see the logs i'll try to cover that tomorrow okay okay sir. okay sir. okay sir. thank you right sir. bye yeah bye sir. thank you